Hey everyone, Michael here for Film Bodega. I'm going to show you five Premiere Pro features that I use all the time and a lot of people don't know about. Let's go check them out. Okay, so let's say a client just sent you a completed video and it's totally edited, right? And you need to rearrange some clips, but you don't know where each clip is. So instead of having to scrub through and add a cut at each of those points, what you can do is right click on your clip, go to scene edit detection. And what I want is apply a cut at each detective cut point. So if I hit analyze, what that's gonna do is run through this entire video and each time the camera angle changes or there's a noticeable change in the scene, Premiere will automatically apply a cut to your clip. And there you go, we're done. Okay, so now we have our video totally edited and let's say we need a social media cut. If you right click here on your sequence and go down to auto reframe sequence, if I click on that, you're gonna get this prompt to ask you what type of video you're trying to make. So the default is square, but let's say I need a vertical uh, nine by 16 version. So if I hit create, it's gonna do two things for me. Duplicate the sequence with the new sequence settings of a vertical video. If you look down here, it says analyzing for auto reframe. So if I go to one of these clips, what Premiere is gonna to try to do is analyze every individual clip and look for some type of core subject to put in the middle of the frame. And there it is right there. So I didn't touch anything. Premiere went ahead and tweaked that clip for me so you can see where it tried to center it a little bit more. And if I need to fine tune this, I just go into the effects controls, go to auto reframe. If I wanna adjust the position, I just click overwrite generated path. And now you'll see the keyframes that it created automatically on its own. And so if I just need to nudge it back over and I just need to bring him, let's say a little more to the left, I just tweak it and I'm good. So for the next thing, let's say we need to add text to our social media edits, some type of call to action. Now I personally don't care for the text tool very much in Premiere Pro. I don't find it good. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest updates they've had lately is the Essential Graphics panel. So if I go to Window and go to Essential Graphics, you might not have every one of these that I have, but I'll link to a bunch of these in the description below. I have a bunch of free Mogerts uh, that I use over and over that I find very helpful, but you will find a bunch that Adobe includes that you're able to use. And these are all animated. So these titles are usually made in After Effects. So it's bringing After Effects style animations into Premiere Pro, but you never have to open After Effects. So you can edit the text and styling and things like that, depending on what type of Mogurt you're using. So if I open here on my favorites, uh, you'll see some of the ones that I use quite a bit, but the one that I use the most is Super Mode. I'm gonna get very meta with you uh, because I didn't like my previous example and I just wanted to prove how serious I am that I use this all the time. You are watching me edit the tutorial you are watching. Here we are exactly where we left off and I just wanna show you something real quick. Uh, let's go back to the very beginning. This is a uh, nested sequence here at the beginning. So if I go into my intro, uh, there's my uh, that's me and I have two Super Mogerts in here. Let's go back to the edit, Let's zoom in here for you. I have a third Super Mogurt here, and this one is actually just the background uh, on underneath a animated logo for the company. And here is another Super Mogurt, and this one's actually just uh, some small text here at the bottom. So if you remember when the credit uh, popped up for this short film, if I was to open this, we have our title text right here, and I just have a rise in effect, and that's it. There's nothing else on this one. If I go back to this one underneath the logo, this one is just a background, so there's no text. I'll show you. There's no text. I have all the shapes, everything turned off. I just have a uh, background turned on and I have a gradient effect. Now this gradient is a four color gradient that's animated and you can change all of these colors, but that's it. This is just driving the background. And now if I go back into this nested sequence here, the uh, top layer is my name and the vertical line. So if I open this one, there's my name, it's in bold. Uh, you can change the fonts. I'm just using Arial because I'm kind of lazy and it's default and you can read it. And you know what, that's good enough. I have a slide right effect uh, on the animation. Let's go 
of these down so you can see. Uh, and then I have my vertical line and it's set to purple, which is the uh, Film Bodega Company's color. And then in the second one, I have uh, the title, it's in a regular font, so it's thinner. And then I just scaled down the size. And this is weird to explain. I used a technique that I haven't taught you yet because it's actually the next tip. I'll show you how I lined these up perfectly. So back to the other video. All right, for this next tip, if you use Photoshop a lot, I bet you didn't know that there are actually some Photoshop tools built into Premiere that are super helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this panel real quick and let's make this bigger so you guys can see. So let's say we don't know exactly where I want this lower third to be. You probably don't have all of these buttons I have. If you don't, just hit this little plus icon and this is gonna show you a bunch of available buttons that you can add to this. Uh, the ones I'm gonna use right now are the safe margins, this guy right here for rulers and this guy here for grids. So you can just drag those here. Let's turn safe margins on. So now we can see kind of roughly where the outlines are, but let's say you need your text somewhere else and you want it to line up. I can open up my rulers and this gives you a Photoshop style canvas where you have the rulers and then you also have the ability to click here and drag out. I'm gonna have Photoshop grid lines. So let's say I want every one to be about here and let's grab one from the top and now I can grab my titles, hit position, and let's grab our text and just rest it. Kind of nestled in right there up against, and there you go. Now you have grids, you can just turn that all back off. But if I have different titles for different characters, I can just turn my grids back on. And as I change these, I'll just make sure that the first character is in the same spot to just give me a nice clean look. One last feature that I use all the time is we have our video done and you're uploading it to YouTube for the client, right? And they want a specific thumbnail. They want a still from the video that they can add YouTube titles in Photoshop. So there's a couple things you can do. So if I go back to my original short, if I open that here in my preview monitor, let's scrub a part that we like that would make a good YouTube thumbnail. Okay, something like this looks great. So I have this little camera icon here and what that's gonna do is export a frame this entire frame for me to use inside of Photoshop. And it pulls from the size of the video. So the original clip is 4K uh, and this version is an HD sequence. So if I take a picture from here, uh, it'll be 1920 by 1080. If I take one from here, it'll be 4K because it's the original source file. The other key difference is any other layers or effects that I have applied to this clip in my timeline. So let's say I also have, well, we have the titles here, but let's say we have color adjustments or something like that. So if I was just to use the camera export frame here, it would include everything that is layered with my shot. So if I take it here, I'll have no text. If I take it here, I will have anything that is in my timeline inside of the image. So I'm just going to hit export frame. Uh, I usually import it into the project and we'll just call this uh, YouTube thumbnail and let's save it wherever you want to. I'll just put it on the desktop for now and we'll hit OK. And now here it is in my project. If I right click on this, I just hit edit in Adobe Photoshop and that's going to open the image directly inside of Photoshop. So now I can just throw on my YouTube titles. So there it is. Let's just go ahead and like here's our cool tutorial. And there you go, YouTube thumbnail ready to deliver. Well, I hope you found those really helpful. Like I said, I use these all the time. And if they're helpful to you, let me know. If there are other Premiere Pro features that you use all the time, let me know down in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more Film Bodega tutorials in the future. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.